So we're noticing that we got to isolate the absolute value first before we start even working with that any, the, the uh, absolute value in that inequality. So isolate that first. After that, notice that our shortcut is going to work. We got to notice that part of it. So first thing, what are you going to do? Subtract. Good. Did you also subtract five? Yes. You didn't go directly to the shortcut, did you? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the right side, this part would work out fine. This part would work out wrong, and you get only about a partial credit on that. You don't want to do that. So minus 5, we're going to get the absolute value of 3x minus 2 less than or equal to 4. Cool. You all made that far, right? Yeah. Does a shortcut work? Yeah. yeah, it's less than or less than or equal to. That means we're going to take negative 4 less than or equal to 3x minus 2 less than or equal to 4. That's a nice shortcut that lets you solve it in just one step. That's great. After this, we're kind of home free, right? This is the easy part. We're going to add 2. Negative 2 is less than or equal to 3x, less than or equal to 6. We'll divide everything by 3. And get negative 2 thirds, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2. Would you please raise your hand if you made it that far? Good deal. Can you make it farther? Yeah, I want to see you all ending with interval notation. That's what we're, we're going to be doing in this class. So if we do, where does it start? Yeah, don't let the fraction intimidate you, right? All you have to do is write it down. Brackets, and you're done. Okay, folks, we should be pros at this. What's the first thing we're going to do on this problem? Add one. Add one. Okay, so we'll do that. Add one, add one. Absolute value, five x. Okay, plus two, sevenths, less than or equal to negative three. Solution, no solution. Why? Okay, absolute value is isolated, true. Whatever I plug in here, do you agree it's going to be positive? Is every positive number in the world ever less than a negative? Yeah. Yeah. Is it ever less than? Is any po is a positive ever less than or equal to a negative number? Yeah. This cannot happen. Cannot happen. This would be no solution. That would be no solution. Now let me change the problem on you. Okay, watch for a second. What if this was no longer minus one? This was now minus six. Would there be a solution in this problem? Yeah. Yes. Yes, because you add 6 to both sides. This would become a 2. And then you would go ahead and solve that. Do you see the difference on that? So don't just assume because that's a negative, you have no solution. You really have to isolate your absolute value before you can do that. We're not going to finish that problem. I just wanted to show that to you. How many of you people feel pretty good about that shortcut that I just showed you? Now, of course, I told you the shortcut can't work every time. That means there's got to be something else that we can do with these things. And that comes down to, instead of dealing with a less than or equal to, what if I have a greater than or a greater than or equal to? Like this. Like that. Now, I want you to think of some numbers that are going to work in this thing. Give me one number that's going to work here. Three. Three. Okay, go for the obvious one. That's awesome because it's equal to you can get three. No problems there. What else? Four. Four. Let's check four. What's the absolute value of four? Four. Is that bigger than three? Yeah. What else? Infinity. Infinity works. Do you know what infinity is? No. Yeah, me neither. I wish I did. Awesome. 
Four works, five works, six works, seven works, eight works, right? Because all those absolute values make them bigger. How about negative two? Why not? How about two? How about zero? Negative one. Negative three. Why negative three? Uh huh. Yes, that works. How about negative four? Negative five? Remember, with a negative number, negative four, what's the absolute value of negative four? It changed to positive. So on our graph, here's what you said. You said negative 3 worked. You said 3 worked. Do these numbers in here work at all? We no. just we just asked this. Did, no, did, no, no. None of these work. Did these numbers work? Yes. These numbers also worked. True? Does that look familiar to you? Remember? We did that? This is your 4. The other one, this is and, for sure. This is your or. That's why we covered both those things. This is the part where we don't have anything in there. We have this. We have this. The, this set of numbers or this set of numbers will work. Let's look at an example here. Okay, here's those questions I'm going to ask you again. First thing, is our shortcut going to work on this problem? Yeah. No. Does it look like this one? No. Heck no, no way. This is way different. This is not less than or less than or equal to. This is greater than or equal to. What's actually kind of nice about this, there is no shortcut here. There's no shortcut. <laughs> and that's it's kind of nice because you don't have to manipulate this at all. All you do is you make up your two inequalities and you solve them. Our shortcut said we could mash things together, right? Because they intersected. Here, these things, they don't intersect. We can't match them together, therefore there's no shortcut. Nudge your with me. Shortcut. No shortcut. Okay, no shortcut there. So, when we do this, we're going to make our two inequalities up. The first one, do we change anything about the first inequality? No. We're just going to essentially drop these signs. Again, put this to the right of your paper. Trust me on this. X plus 2 is greater than 4. We don't change anything about that. Let's do the other one. What's, what's the other one that I'm talking about? What do we have to write down? Okay, so tell me exactly what I need to write. X plus 2 and then? Less than what now? Perfect. Notice how we're changing the sign of the number and we're flipping the sign. Raise your hand if you're okay with that. Good, that's fantastic. That's exactly what we need to be right now. There is no shortcut. Look how the signs are facing different ways. Even if I reverse them, they'd, they'd be facing the wrong way. They'd be actually going from a negative to a positive. The signs would be, would be right, but the, the expression would not be. Okay, it'd say you have a number that's less than a negative and at the same time bigger than a positive. And that can't work. That, that, mat and that expression would be meaningless. You cannot do the shortcut with a greater than or a greater than or equal to. Are you with me on that? You cannot do it. All you can do is write your two inequalities. These are talking about an or. These are or inequalities in the middle. And then solve each one. So what we're doing here, you're still going to make two inequalities. No shortcut. Here's the whole idea. Here's actually what we saw here. What we saw here is that we had x's greater than or equal to 3, and we had x's less than or equal to negative 3. That's what we had. We had one exactly the same. We had one by changing the sign of the number and flipping that sign around. That gave us this graph. Look at how these graphs match up. Do you see that? They do match. One's exactly the same. One, I changed the sign and flipped my inequality, and it gave us this portion of our graph. That's why we have to do that. So for any absolute value of x is greater than or greater than or equal to a, we're going to do x is greater than a, x is less than negative a. And that's what we're doing in our case right here. And we're going to solve each one. 
So let's solve this. How do you solve the right one? X is greater than 2. How about this one? X is less than negative 6. So far so good? Hey, here's why, by the way, I had you write the first one on the right-hand side. Because if you do that, check it out. Most times, 95% of the time, when you do your number line, it's now in order. See how it's in order now? You don't have to switch things around. That makes it kind of nice, right? So we're going to have our negative 6, our positive 2. It's already in order. Guess what? This is an or inequality, right? Or 99% of the time, 95% of the time, goes like this. That's what it does. So if we have x bigger than 2, we know we're going that way. If we have x less than or equal to negative 6, we're going that way. We've done this a lot. That's why I'm kind of going quickly through it. We, we should have mastered this concept at this point. Can you do your interval notation from here? Yes. Where does this interval start? Negative. Negative. Wait, negative? negative. To where? Negative. Good. Parentheses, parentheses. What goes in the middle of our two, two values? Two segments here. We go two to infinity. So here's our idea. Idea is make your two inequalities. One positive, one negative with the sign of the second one. The inequality of the second one. Solve both of them down. Chances are you're going to get that. That's, that's most likely what's going to happen. Let's try a few more. I'll give you one to do on your own as I'm erasing some stuff over there, and then we'll call it a day. So work on that one. If you finish that one and you're feeling pretty good about it, try this one. Take about one more minute to see if we can wrap up that problem. If you finish that one first, uh, do the second one. Let's work on the first one together. Hey, does a shortcut work for this problem? <laughs> 